we're now going to do a little bit of layout work for a web page. I have a blog that I do called Halloweenables. It just kind of documents some of the hobby I have on Halloween, making little Halloween village stuff. And I have copied off some pieces on that. I'm planning on converting that blog over into a website at some point. And I want to decide where everything's going to be sitting on that web page. So let's take a look at the process you can go through to do that. Start off by making a new file. And we have this to open up here. There we go. Choose web from your drop down list. Choose the size you want to have. I'll choose the 8 by 6 basic size. We can choose the background contents. Now my background is going to be the background color. In this case background color is black. I'm working with a black background on this one. So there's our basic layout that gives me a basic file to work into just like that. Next we need to bring in some additional content in here. Now I have a lot of the stuff already available and we'll place it into this page. And if we just come in here and let's take a look at Actually, I'm going to change our format here. Let's take a look at just bitmap files right there. These are all grabbed as bitmaps. And I'll use our top one first, the About Me block. There it is. It comes in pretty small. I'll hold the Shift key down bring it out proportionally. And I'll just drop it in over here someplace. Click on the Move button and place that. Let's now place another one. I have an add block in here. Let's place that in. There we go. Again, I'll hold down the shift key and kind of resize that about the size I want. At this point, I'm just bringing the elements into my document like this, I'm not really worrying about where they're going to be sitting. And I'll bring in all the elements. I may actually want to have some of these things further down below. Here's our archive. Again, hold the shift key, resize that about where I want it. Just like that. Put that in behind here someplace. And then let's place our next piece. Now all these pieces, you could actually build these inside of Photoshop. Let's just take a fast look at that. Maybe I want to just build it a little about me box. Just build this in Photoshop using the text and then save it as a block of you know, a little Photoshop, you can save it as a Photoshop file, save it out as something else. To use whatever method you use to get that little piece, you then can use that as an element here in creating your layout. Doesn't matter how you get these things. Next is a little background image that I have here, a little background color which may or may not be used. Let's pull it down towards the background. Actually, I need to place that first. There we go. Pull that down like that. And then I'll hide that temporarily. And then another place to have a section here for content. Let's bring this in. And again, I'll resize this until it's about the size I think where the text should be for the page. There we go. Let's just hide that temporarily, get that out of the way. And let's place in one more piece in here. The little favorites site bit. And again, I'll pull that in, get it sized about right. I think about there it looks pretty good. Okay, so I have some elements in here now. I have another piece I can use as a background element. Let me bring that one in here. Again, we'll go to place. I'm going to change this back and show all formats right down there. And I'll look through my list to see if I can spot my other file. It's going to be easier if I just set this to large icons and then just glance through. There we go. A little PNG file there. Bring that in as another background option. And again we'll place that one. That looks good. And I'll pull that down below. There we go. So now I have my different elements. I can drop this up here just temporarily. Might be a little too large. I'm going to resize that. Just pull it down a bit. There we go. Resize that a little bit. And there are the basic elements for my 
web page. Let's just put our layers, flip the layers up here, get this stuff out of the way. The main thing to work around is going to be the main body section, which is the content section right here. So I'm going to put it right in, just in the middle someplace. Now I can go over here, and by having auto select selected, I can easily switch around between these items as I'm working in my layout. And then just grab it and move that. Now I think this might look a little bit better if I have a little outline around this. Let's add a little effect on this, FX. Let's give this one a stroke. And I'll change the color here to a white. I'll choose web colors in white. Like that. And I'll bring that down to one point, maybe two points, I think. Looks pretty good. So that gives me just a little outline around that. Maybe a little darker might be a good way to go on that stroke. Again, let's look at our color. And I'll bring that down a little bit there. There we go. So that's that element. We can hide content for a second. Now he has some ads in behind here. They're a little small. I'm going to bring the size up just a little bit. Just hold the shift key down and pull that up. Now the ads I'll have coming in here underneath my about me box just like that. So I'll reposition those. And then I may or may not want to have these have an outline around that I can deal with that later on. But there's some ads over there. On the right hand side I have a couple of elements. They have the favorite sites element and the blog archive element. I'm going to collapse our layers down a little bit. See if we can get these just a little bit out of the way. There we go. It's even better. Again, making sure that you have the auto select. Select makes it easy to move things around just by choosing your section, just moving it around like that. Now on both of these, I need to leave some space across the top up here for some text for the title. So pull this down a little bit. Now let's, let's pull in a, a line here, give myself a line as a reference tool for space to leave up here. And then I'll pull it down again a little further and this will be the reference tool for the top of these sections. I have snap on so that these elements snap right to that line so that now I know that the top of this is matched with the top of that one. And let's just get off of that tool. There we go. Apply that transformation back to our move tool. Come down to this block. Pull it down a little bit until it looks good. There's my right side. Let's bring our content back in again. And using my cursor keys, I'm going to just shift this over a little bit so it fits a little bit better. This is a different layout that I actually have in my blog. I'm changing the layout somewhat here. Now these two need to line up, and they're not lining up very well right now. On a web page, these would be in their own column. So I'm going to pull in another alignment tool over here, pull over just a little bit. And I'll grab these and pull them to the right and let them snap right to that line, which will then line those up nicely. There we go. Okay, so here's kind of a basic layout for the page, just using these different elements. And again, to get these elements, you can either copy them off like I did, just clip them off and, and use them as bitmaps, or I could have spent the time and actually built these as a series of layers inside of Photoshop and then just merge those layers together and then use that as a merged layer for my layout. We need to have some text up here and I need to do something with this background. Let's find our little background piece up there. And there it is. I'm going to pull this down so it starts just below this line. I'll leave this blank for my header. And let's expand this out a little bit. I'm going to make a few copies of this one. Let's do an edit. Actually, we're a, a smart layer here. So I'm going to just pull this down and make a copy like that. And I'll pull that over and let it snap together. There we go. Let's make another copy of that. Pull that over, let that just kind of snap together. Make another copy and pull that over. Now, on an actual web page, I wouldn't need to do this. I would use just the one and put it into the background. It would then seamlessly tile into the background. I probably had to put in a black area above here to block that background out since it would go clear to the top. But this gives me the same look and feel of that. Now, you can speed the process up here if you want to. 
once you've done this just come in here select all of these layers like that and using the pop out menu let's go here so we can see this a little bit better using the pop out menu let's merge those layers together into one layer there we go I now can make a copy of that layer and then pull that whole thing over just like that let's now merge these two together same thing I'll use that that merge layers right there make a copy of that one pull that layer down below so it snaps again right to itself just lines up exactly merge these two together and then I'll pull that down grab the wrong one actually you make a copy first there we go missing one step drag that down make sure it snaps into place and I'll just do one more of those very quickly here oh, grab the wrong piece there grab that background which is that one and pull that down until it snaps in again so there we go we've now created the effect of a seamless background I probably want to make my page a little bit longer if I was working on this I can see a little more of a web page web pages tend to be very long so if you need to extend your web page on your layout just go up here to image and canvas size put this to the top and then increase the height I'm going to double the height here to 16 inches and choose OK that gives me more space underneath as you can see there it just extends it down below without changing anything above so that thing gives me more space to come in and add in more content down below to figure out my layout we now can come in and I'm going to just pull this up a little bit until it matches up with that alignment line at the top there it is Notice the color changes when that happens so you can actually see where it when it lines up exactly the last thing we need in here is the text across the top so I'll go to the text tool I want this in a bright orange let's change our our color here to a bright orange find something that'll work I think that's pretty good put the layers down notice as I change the foreground color it also changed the color over here the type click inside and take a look at the height of your text that's real small so let's try 72 that's pretty good type in the name of the site I'm going to change this over here to left justified text is a little small still so let's go up here to let's say 92 point that might be okay this will have to be a graphic on the final page because we can't use any fancy type on a web page we can use all this, all this basic stuff we can grab easily but the fancy type will have to be a graphic now that we have this we can come in here and looking at our nice large sized samples we can scroll through and see if anything has the feel that we want now, I want to have this kind of a, a cheerful page but still a little Halloween ish feeling so it has to have a bit of a style to it but kind of a, a happy style and that's actually not too bad kind of like that one let's just use the cursor keys again and adjust the position a little bit and there we go so we've now by using these just standard techniques here we've laid out a basic structure for my website now once I have this I'll need to come in and set this up for use as an actual web page easy way for that is to divide this up and then slice it and I can use the slices to create tables over in or save it as tables for use in, in Dreamweaver convert those tables over to layers which I can do in Dreamweaver and then do all my standard Dreamweaver stuff so I'm going to be coming in here grab these guides and let me do one more thing I'm going to click on this image right there and if I pull a guide down it's going to snap right to the edge of that image just like that let's click on this image drag a guide down it's going to snap to that spot there we go so I need to find all of the edges of all of my images that I have and if I want to align these things up I can just do slight adjustments on them make sure everything snaps and they're aligning as much as possible 
click on our center section here I'm going to bring in my alignment tools like that again lining up with those edges and I'll simply come in and put in guides up against all of the edges of these sections that way I can then recreate those sections as layers over in Photoshop or over in Dreamweaver rather and then apply all of my standard CSS styles and so forth and use that to create my actual web page. I'll leave this one alone but I want to have that one just stretching out. So there we go. There is setting up and doing the basic layout for a web page doing a web page comp. And we can then if I wanted to I'd go over here to my slice tools and create slices from these guides or I can just use the guides as a guide for my slices. For instance, if I wanted to slice this section in here, the guide tool is also going to snap right to those guidelines. And I can create my slice just like that. And then I'll come in and just, just make each one of these individual sections, convert that into a slice, and then just like that and just slice this one up here just to go a few of these slices. Let's do one right up here for the opening text section. I just do a black background for that. Now that I have these slices done here I can then save this file save for web and devices. Bring this up. Check out the slices. Make sure our slice is OK and then save it in whatever format we need to save this as. Since I have slices selected, I'll click on the, the Save button just off screen. And once we're in this section here, once we have our Save As dialog box, in here I can choose HTML and Images right there. That's probably the one you want to go for. I'll do All Slices, or you can do Selected Slices or All User Slices. That's what I did, was the User Slices. Choose custom, background image, default settings, so forth. I'll leave that at the default settings. I can then save this one. Let's just call this one Halloweenables. Like that. Choose save. And it will then save this as a web page. All of these slices, I'll just go ahead and get that out of the way. All of these slices will be saved into a table structure with these images in the actual place they need to be in the table structure. I can then open that page up in Dreamweaver, convert that table over into layers in Dreamweaver, and then go from there. And I'll have a very good start for creating my web page out of this comp. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. And finally, you can get all of my training videos on DVD at howtogurus.com. Thanks again for watching.